This is a radio show for people with problems. Home improvement problems, that is. And for people who want common sense guidance on how to build green and live a more sustainable lifestyle. Send an email or call into the show. The Mighty House crew is on the job. This is Mighty House. All right. Hey, you can join us on Facebook Live, YouTube Live, Periscope Live. Right now, brought to you in part by Mr. Floor. And wherever you're watching, make sure you click on the like button and hit that subscribe button. Is that what you're doing, Rich, right here? Yeah, I'm hitting the like button. Like <laughs> button, click. <laughs> click right there. Uh, podcasts of all the shows are available at MightyHouse.net on uh, Stitcher, YouTube, iTunes, SoundCloud, and on uh, HomeImprovementUSA.com. Find links to all of them at MightyHouse.net. And uh, if, see, if somebody really wanted to join the, uh, the club here and get the newsletter, Rich, how could they do that? Well, you definitely want to get the newsletter. So you want to go to MightyHouse.net. Go to the Contact Us page. All we're looking for is first, last name, email address. Scroll on down to the bottom and click on Boom Done. Boom Done. And uh, what's our topic today? Uh, we're going to talk about me, me, me. Me, me, me? What, Robbie, what's, what, what's the topic today? PPE. But here's the funny thing. You guys could just be mannequins <laughs> and just do a voiceover later because nobody could see your lips or anything. You could just be a mannequin. Yeah. Which is a man right now. He's just standing there. Yeah, there yes. we go. Well, I can move. That's better. Well, That's better. Let's, yeah. Whoa, let's see. Let's get this off. PPE. Personal. PPE? Protective. Yes, personal. Mm -hmm. Protective. Okay. Equipment. Equipment. Yes. So depending okay. on where you're working, and obviously with this, uh, with the Rona going around, you know, we have to protect ourselves. Yes. So, there. you know, we go out to job site, regardless of the temperature and so on, you might need to put on one or two things to, to help yourself out. Right. So excuse me while I walk off the wall. Sure. Because you're like Looks you. Looks like you're grabbing his butt. <laughs> I'm getting warm. I know. Yeah. Stay, there you go. Oh, it's crazy. Woo! Woo! All right. <laughs> Rich, come Rich, on. I'm, I might leave those on. <laughs> Are you down with PPE? Yeah, I am down with me. PPE. <laughs> uh huh. Sure. There we go. What has gotten into you two? What? We haven't seen each other in weeks. The three of us have not been together in weeks. So I know. Oh my and I'm God. sporting my new pandemic do. All right. Yeah. Mine is not the same. Yours, yours has not changed much since no. the last time I saw you. No. It, it might be thickening in. No. Every two weeks I cut it, whether it needs it or not. So okay. I just get the clippers out and rrr, 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 take care of it. So um, what are you guys doing uh, personal protection wise on your job sites now that we've got this Corona thing going down? So and is it minimum different? requirements are masks um, and, of course, washing up. But depending, we, we cut back on our crew sizes. Yep. You know, like I don't have the plumber, electrician, HVAC guy in the job at the same time. We, we added two weeks to the schedule. Sure. To give them a week to themselves. Correct. Crew sizes are typically three or four guys. So they can, you know, they might have their morning meeting, but then they're spread out. Right. So it's fairly safe. And it, I don't think there's as many reported cases from being outside in other words it seems like that six foot away outside seems to be a lot safer than right. being 12 foot apart in a room right right and you know what i mean so. yeah so we're doing the um we're, we're doing the masks we have hand sanitizers on the job sites no sharing of tools um and then when we're going into a house if there's somebody lives there then uh, we plastic the whole whole place off when we're in the areas that we're working yeah um, so if you're working in, a, in an area that where no one lives, well, then we can do it. What's wrong? You don't like your, uh, I, I, I got fuzzy, a, a hard hat so he could yeah. join us, but he, he just took it off. These headphones, his headphones aren't part of my PPE. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was having the same problem there, fuzzy yeah. Rob, because I had to put my headphones backwards to and get the mic, so the things kept wanting to fall off, but yeah, these are not designed to go under But don't they make them for radios and stuff? I know, I know Robbie's sitting up there. Yeah. Yes, Robbie. <laughs> Two things. Is the equipment they're using now different than what you normally use? And the other thing is, are there a lot of people letting you in their homes right now? 
Yeah, there are some. Some some people are doing. It. I mean, the other thing is we're not using the regular rubber gloves. We've got these that you know they're they're on the backs are open, and, and so you've got these rubber gloves that you can use. Then the other thing that we're using are those a, disposable or yeah, washable? They're washable and or disposable because if you use okay. the regular plastic gloves, you break them right away. If you pick up a screw and they rip, so. The other hey, thing, because gloves is what we're supposed to finish on. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, that's fine. Let's let's. I, you're right there at masks, but those are down the list just a little bit. Okay. So let's. Let, and the last Corona let's thing just, that we've done is we've got masks that I, right. I uh, commissioned my mom to make to put the uh, uh, Merv 13 filter in. So there's a little pocket so, inside here, and we can do those. Whoa. We have a lovely lady. Whoa. On, Whoa. We have a lovely lady on the island who yep. is making these as well. Yeah. Um, she charges us 15 bucks for a pair of them. Yep. They're washable and all that. Yep. Um, but the money she makes on them is to buy more material. And then she donates like for every two she sells, she donates one to the hospital. Excellent. So she might be making a couple of bucks, but you know, so hey, they're pretty nice. They're high quality, lots yep. of different patterns. I don't care. Nope. And then so this is what I wear going to, to Lowe's, right. to, you know, to one of the hardware stores. I was just in the local Ace today and I was, you know, like 75% of the people are wearing these. Uh-huh. You know, the other 25, I don't know. They're just, they're gamblers, I guess. Yeah, they don't care. Well, Can you I mean, talk the thing is, I wear it because I work on the East Coast a couple of days a week. Sure. And they've got thousands of cases. Yeah. So just in the chance that I did pick it up and don't know it yet, I wear mine so I don't infect right. others. Because they're not the so. 95s, the, the full-fledged, like, kill single yeah. cell organisms as they come through you're really protecting the people around you yep. when you wear a Correct. mask so what that does is it makes it to where is instead of six feet that you got to be away from somebody now maybe you you drastically reduce that that distance even though you're still putting that six feet in there yes Robbie. well robbie didn't you share that that meme that had that info where two people did not wear a mask what the odds right. were Yes. Okay, go ahead, run with it. I was just going to ask, though, about the difference between the regular, you know, papery face mask, the cotton one, and the one that has a little pocket. Because I've heard a lot about these, that people have the pockets okay. and you have the Merv filter. Um, some people right. are also saying you can put a coffee filter in there. Mm -hmm. So can you talk about what a Merv filter is and the difference between all of these? Sure. And how important it is. That it be we don't need that script at all because we're so far off, <laughs> off of it right now. <laughs> there's, there's I don't know why like you bother. Seven things so on the script. Anyway, this is a a standard dust mask. Right. This is designed like a Merv Seven furnace filter. This will keep rocks out of your mouth. That yeah, they they are awful. But beyond that, it doesn't do a lot of good. But that said, when we're talking about a pandemic and viruses, no, will a virus cell get through this? Probably, but we're not talking about virus cells. We're talking about spittle. Right. We're talking about launched sneezes and globules of moisture. This yep. would still probably stop some. Maybe right. it's only 50%. I don't know. It's a dust mask. The N95 is supposed to stop up to 95% down to four or six microns, something in that area. It's a Personally, N95 .3. masks are a waste of money. Mm -hmm. You are much better off sourcing P95 masks because a P95 will take some oils. It will take some sweat. So for a guy working in a field or nurses, an N95, they throw them away after every patient, that's fine. But for a guy in the field... I might need three N95s during a day, but I could get away with one P95. Right. So they cost a little bit more, same protection, but because they're petroleum or oil resistant, they will last far longer. So once this is over and you go back to the job site and you're wearing it to actually protect your lungs, look for P95s. Right, right, so. right. So, uh, and then your MERV, fil the MERV filter is just because a lot will get through the cotton on this, so by putting that mm -hmm. filter in there, you're just helping to mm -hmm. reduce the amount of uh, particles that are able to get through either direction. So that's really Where what this is for. Where do you get for. this? This? Where do you get the Merv filter? Oh, um, you can buy them at the hardware store and then cut a, cut the filter. Filter material. fabric. But we we ordered filter fabric, so we've just got fabric here that we just roll and, and cut it up, and then we cut it into pockets to put in here. 
And what about coffee filters? I've heard that a million times. It's probably no better than a regular dust mask. Right. I can't. I mean, who the hell does testing on it? I'm not even going to speak to it's that. It's another right? layer. Unless you're going to go get it tested I mean, in a lab. If right. anything, it's another layer. Sure. I mean, that's all it is. Yeah, which I would agree with that theory right there. But I wouldn't give it any dollar. I wouldn't put any points or uh, percentages on it. Right. Yeah, Just like a dust mask. I have no idea. Especially because I still end up with grounds in my coffee anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you, you still end up with grounds in them. There you, you go. Won't, you won't even stop grounds. <laughs> The so virus? this one is is a this is a manufactured one that's you know breathable. It's made to be wear, worn all day, and it has the filter inside of it. You know, so it's got the mask part that clips into the breather. And so this one, like if you're working all day out on the job, this one's also really good because it all it holds up to that. And this is also washable. Can you even get those anymore? Because you go no. on to like Amazon or anything, everything is sold out. No, this stuff I had all before this all started. Yeah, exactly. Well, and me, I gave away all my masks to the doctor and then all of a sudden they said, oh, you should wear a mask. I'm like, I gave them all away. Right, right. So it's there crazy. We go. Okay. All right, let me back up here. Let's start talking about just some stuff in order. We'll double back and we'll cover this stuff again. So let's safety glasses. Um, I'll be honest, because of the lights I have to use for this, uh, you know, to keep the germs away from Ron and I, since we're within six feet, we should probably have our stuff on. Right. See, we're six feet so, apart. There's three right there. Yeah. Three plus so 1,500 miles. Glasses, when you're looking for safety glasses, the only thing you and OSHA care about is somewhere either on the frame or on the lens, should say Z87. Z87 is the OSHA standard that your safety glasses must be made to. If they don't have that, it's because they were inexpensive. Hey, it's on here. There I got to go. put these on to see it, but it's on there. You're right. And in the meantime, you get a stone in the eye because you got your safety <laughs> glasses off trying to check them. So what are these protecting you from? Uh, flying nail screws, rocks, whatever. But the Z87 is a shatter standard, so it'll take a better <laughs> impact without breaking and going into your eye. Yeah. Where a, something that might be just regular plastic sold as safety glasses uh, for three bucks, the lens can crack. You still get the nail in the eye. Right. So, again, <laughs> OSHA and ANSI and all these other people get together. They do these crazy tests, which they do, and they come up with these standards. So... Right. And you've got nail it's guns out nice. there, shooting nails. Um, even if, you know, when, when you're on a job and you're Excuse used me, to be Ron, I just, I left it's this. It's okay. I button. like it. Um, <laughs> so if you had a 16 penny nail and you were driving it with a, with a hammer, sometimes you'd hit it and that nail go flying off. So um, right. the, driving single nails is probably even worse than actually uh, than nail guns. Nail guns. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, if you're using a jackhammer or anything, you know, right. Rocks. probably the only complaint I've ever had with safety glasses was, you know, if you're just ripping a lot of wood, the dust sticks to them static. Yes. And to me, sometimes it's almost less safe because now all of a sudden I can't see. Right. And then you're doing this. So, yeah. And then you lose a thumb. Right. Yeah, and and sh never dry wipe glasses. Always wash them with water. Don't so do what don't I just, just did. Scratch the lens. Yeah. Don't do what Ron just did. <laughs> Especially at a job site. Right. Yeah. Which is yeah, what I do with the these job all site. the time. So. Right. You clean shirt right, at so, a job site. Yeah. Luck. Glasses, the 87. I don't care what style. Just make sure they say that somewhere on there. So the other thing that's really important, and I can tell you this because I'm 57 years old, and the ringing in my ears constantly is huh? so bad that I'm constantly yelling at the wife to answer the phone. Huh? So I, this is a result of not wearing hearing protection all my years working. There you go, Ron. So some tips about hearing protection. You know, what's really sad is I did not have to go out to my work truck to get PPE. I went in my shooting bag. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there so, you go. Your headset. I have a headset. I can't put them on because I actually have the radio show headset. Right. Earplugs. Just regular foam earplugs. Now, here's the tip on these and your headset. They're going to be marked with a decibel rating. These earplugs are marked 32 decibels. Now, what does that mean? Does it no mean idea. that all sound will be knocked down to 32 decibels? No. No, it means it will only reduce the noise by that amount. Assuming they're fitting into your ear properly. Yeah, I got the extra large. <laughs> 
See, these are too banged up. I can't even read anything on these anymore. Yeah, so when you go out to look for hearing protection, whether it's a headset or even noise canceling or just regular earplugs, the bigger the number, the better they're going to knock down the decibel. So these are 32. So if I'm standing somewhere and a jet engine's 132 decibels, I'm still going to hear 100 decibels. Whereas the headset might be 60 decibels. So at 130, I'm only going to hear 50 or 60, 70, excuse me. Yeah, and, and I like these better than the, fo the, the foam ones because the foam ones just don't seem to fit in very well. And they're, they're, so, they fall out and... Right. So I, the range I go to is an outdoor range. So I will put these in before I even get out of the truck. Uh -huh. And then, and you can hear real well with these, but then when I'm shooting, I actually put the headset over them with those still in, which is really, it's a little too late with, like I said, with the ringing. <laughs> no, that, that, uh, so, that uh, uh, tinnitus is actually pretty bad. Oh, um, yeah. Double hearing protection is what we needed every time that we fired off uh, the sonar. Uh -huh. We needed double hearing protection. And the cool thing about decibel math is it's weird. It's logarithmic. So every 10 decibels you get, it actually doubles the loudness. So uh, you were talking oh. about how um, a jet engine is about 130, somewhere around there. Pain and very noisy, like a concert or something, is actually like uh, 110, 120, somewhere wow. around there. So you turn around and you go... A jet engine is twice as loud as this concert that I was just at, but it's only ten decibels apart. So that's where the math is a little, uh, a little Fuzzy. weird. Throws you off. Yeah. <laughs> Fuzzy. I like. Yeah. That. I mean, it's just. Fuzzy math. It just, you know, it's hard. I mean, you know, that I cannot go to my office and sit down at work without a radio on. Right. Because just the ringing, just sitting in a room by myself, the ringing, it's like, <laughs> it's crazy. Of course, I don't take anything for it, but no. apparently they have drugs. But I see that long list of side effects. I'm like, no, the ringing is not that bad. Get the phone. <laughs> Speaking of lists, item number four. Four? Uh, footwear. Huh? Footwear. Oh. Well, then, I, excuse me. I'll be right back. Go ahead. Talk amongst so yourselves. So OSHA has a standard for footwear. So when you go out to buy work boots, these... These are not acceptable for working construction sites. <laughs> They're good for doing shows, walking the beach and streets. Z41 will be sewn right into the tongue of your work boot. So a Z41 work boot is going to have a steel shank, and it may or may not have a steel toe. And I'm willing to bet you that those steel-toed <laughs> slippers, which are from years ago... <laughs> Do they still have the Z41 tag on the tongue? Uh, no, because there is no tongue. No, there's oh. no tongue. But the the, I see. the steel is. Is it coming out? I oh no, I glued that. I, that's that's in there. I mean, okay, there's so anybody that's new to us. This go back. <laughs> heck, they're before I joined the show. Steel-toed bunny back slippers. Fifteen years. Steel-toed bunny slippers. That's there right. Go. Don't ask Can me how we got on. What, say that again, Robbie. You made these wrong? Yes, I made them. Oh, I remember. He sewed the bunnies, yep. and his <laughs> wife put the steel toes in. I had, I had an old pair of uh, steel toes, so I took those out. What happened was there was a recall on the Sub-Zero refrigerators because the doors would fall off, the hinges. <laughs> so in order to protect yourself, we designed these steel-toed bunny <laughs> slippers so that when you went to the refrigerator, you would not have to worry about losing a toe to the refrigerator refrigerator door coming off because those large uh, sub-zero refrigerators those oh are yeah huge. yeah that's, that a, that's a heavy door let's so, just say it ruin your morning so that's why we came up with the steel toe bunny slippers how many did you sell zero <laughs> how many did you market oh uh, well we had we had the design nobody wanted to take us up on the design and and, and go into manufacturing so that's that's kind so of where are you the whole telling thing me fell. there's no patent pending or is no, the patent about to nope, run out nope anybody can steal it steel toe bunny slippers it's out there go ahead use it it's all nice. yours I, I, i'll okay, take credit so we for did, the idea right okay so your footwear though like i said you want to use z41 will be sewn into the boot it will tell you that that's an osha approved work boot 
So me, I've got my Red Wings are in the closet. They weigh 100 pounds. They're they're uh, uh-huh. waterproof. Z41. I'll tell you what, though, they're still so comfortable. Yep. Yep. So. No, it's, it's a good, solid boot to wear. All right. Foot so the next one I want to talk about here real quick is just air scrubbers and dust management. Uh, job site. So, yeah. So, well, it's part of personal protection is manage the area. So take what's going on right now, the pandemic. If you go into a, a, a person's hospital room, they're in bed and they're in you know, critical condition, that room is positively pressured. Right. That door opens, no contaminants come in, the air rushes out. So everything's leaving that room, nothing can come back in. So we want to do the same thing. And, and you said the same thing about how you're treating your job sites. If people are still in the home while you have to work there, you're basically tenting the inside of the house. You're putting up this queen barriers. And then I know you've got your scrubber running, don't right. you? Yeah, we have the build smart uh, air scrubbers that that move a bunch of air. And then those, you can have them circulate to just keep the air inside that, or you can create negative air pressure. There's an eight inch uh, flexible tube that will run out of, out a window. And then that right. way, that will actually create negative air pressure within the work zone so that any dust that's created gets sucked into that and is and then blown outside and exhausted and it outside it doesn't go but let's the let's throw a caveat in there you're not blowing the dusty air outside it's going through a hepa filter yes and then the clean air is going outside you cannot and i'm old enough to remember the days we put a box fan in the window and <laughs> went to demo and the dust just blew outside yep that's a big no-no now because of lead dust and all that so don't just put a fan in the window right because yeah, you were installing it then Correct. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that, that part's true, too. So. Questions? And the last item I got, the last, I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, these HEPA air scrubbers, uh-huh. Uh-huh. about how much? Because you're like, oh, don't just put a fan in the window. So a fan is like $50, I don't know. And a HEPA is how much? The air scrubber. They're all different um, sizes that all move different, you know, amounts of air. The ones we have, I think they're 800 CFM. So they, they move quite a bit of air when you crank them up on high. Uh, I can dry my hair in front of it in minutes. Uh, but you can turn those on, and those are about, I don't know, eight 900 bucks. But if, you, if you're constantly on a job site and you need them all the time, it's well worth it. So Do you need again, to dry Robbie, your hair? Yeah, sometimes. Like, like when I just came in from the rain, I had to dry it off real quick. So the thing is, the rules that are in place, either by the EPA, OSHA, and all that, a lot of these rules do not really apply to the homeowner working on their own home. So if you want to contaminate your own house, that's fine. You don't have to drop the 800 bucks. Right. But at the very least, I would actually have you put the Visqueen up, make sure your HVA system is off so you're not running and circulating air. Right. And then leave the workspace, let the dust settle, then go do a good cleaning. Unfortunately, when you watch the... the uh, home improvement channels on cable, they're always in there with sledgehammer, smashing stuff, blowing stuff around. Majority of the time, they don't have masks on, they don't have gloves, they barely have eye protection, you know, and the dust is just getting everywhere. So if it's a pre-1978 house, almost anywhere in this country, and you're looking to buy a house, they can, it could be contaminated with lead dust, and it's not a house I'd want to bring children into. Right, exactly. So they're teaching you a lot of bad things. Yes, anybody can go to any store and get a sledgehammer. Mm-hmm. It's a smart person that knows how to use it. <laughs> yeah. Just saying. Or a Sawzall. Yeah. Yeah. There we Agreed. go. So, All right. Gloves. Gloves. Simply about gloves. So, again, you know, when you're young and working your butt off, never had time to put gloves on. But back in our day, back in my day, about all I could get were brown jersey gloves. Yep. And brown jersey gloves, no, they didn't keep your hands warm. They didn't protect you a whole hell of a lot. Um, they'd they, snag on everything, but they kept you from getting they'd rope smolder. Burned. If you lit one of them on fire, when you were trying to light a cigarette, they would smolder. <laughs> yep. I had that happen on a job once to a guy. We walked around a building trying to find the fire, realized it was his glove smoldering <laughs> in his back um, pocket. <laughs> no, it was just, you know, it just finally oh. burned his fingers. Like, Whoa. There. Anywho. So you can see these here, these gloves, these, by the way, Klein tool gloves, but I've see how you can tell I've <laughs> kind of worn these out a little bit. That must be your favorite finger there. Yeah, well, yes, it is. <laughs> That's front of my website. 
Right. Well, as a framer, we used to just, I'd cut these two tips off the gloves right. just because then I could roll nails. Yep. Can't roll nails very well with gloves on. So right. I'd always take those two off so I could nail them. So gloves have come a long way. This pair is probably three years old now. It's got some damage. Uh-huh. Um, but these have a good gripping surface. Yep. A good water-resistant surface. Very flexible bas backside that breathes. And I just wash them with the garden hose and... Right. Oh, so I have, old. I have a pair of those here, too, that uh, with the back that's breathable. They're rubber. So that's what I've mm -hmm. been using lately instead of my, my, my clients. What I like about these clients is that the palms are padded so that you can, you know, if you're picking up heavy stuff and hauling stuff, mm -hmm. they're a little bit, they protect your hands a little bit more. Um, yeah, the rubber these are ones, also padded palm, and that's something to look for. Yeah. So uh, can I just say something real quick? Yeah. Sure. When you put those down, you put them right into Rich's hands. Did I? Yeah. It was awesome. They're, wow. Thank you. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Here, Rich. Here's another pair. Try these gloves on. Here, try those. You want to try those? No, no, no. No, right, just yeah. right in front of you, Rich. Right just there. Right in front there you of, go. Right there. Try those. It was perfect. So, And then I have the dish made, the, the dishwashing ones. So if you're working with... Yeah. Uh, chemicals or something like that, something that possibly could burn, then uh, mm -hmm. then I've got a pair of these also. But they're just the heavy duty, you know, staining or anything like that that you're gonna be using chemicals, oil-based stuff. And these have the same right. thing. They're a little padded, extra grip in, in the palm and the, in the fingers. Um, so. so we'll just touch lightly on another subject, sure, which those. is the, the, the body suit. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. So time out, you can time buy Tyvek suits. Time out, right, time out, Robbie. Go. Time out. I just want to clarify. You said they're the dishwashing gloves. Yeah, that's that's how they I, are. The big rubber ones. Yeah. They are not the dishwashing gloves. They're not. What are no, they? these? Oh, are yellow. Special. I don't want people to think. Oh, look, Ron Cowgill on Mighty House said I could wear my dishwashing gloves and not get chemical burns. Maybe. But you're talking about special gloves. These? I, I mean, I went. Are to, they just dishwashing gloves? I just went to the paint department. For the most part, yeah. Yeah, that's that's a, here. Fuzzy, well, have an impartial, yeah. impartial uh, judge. Yeah, look these at are a little thicker than the uh, than the normal ones, but yeah, they're just not yellow. Right. That's that's all they are. They're, because they're a cooler really? color. That's yeah. All. You yeah. got to also make sure that when you work with chemicals and stuff, I mean, not a lot of construction chemicals are going to eat a lot of rubber, but there are certain right. chemicals out there that you need special types of rubber for for those chemicals. But like for paint thinners. Yeah. Paint thinners and that kind of stuff. Yeah, th general chemicals. That's more than adder. Yeah. Uh, okay, acetone. Now, now we've got steel steel toes. Right. Can we get steel fingers? I don't think because so. I mean, how many times you guys uh, well, smashed yourself with a with a hammer? Now, right? if you if you work in a meat eh, packing plant, two or three. then you do. You have the chain gloves. Okay. Yeah, the that, chain mail. Sure. Yeah. So those Good. those that work in a in a meat packing plant will have those. My father in law had a pair of those. Oh. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry, I digress. Body suits. No. Body suits. Oh, so yeah, body suits. So you see the nurses and everybody all dressed up in their 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 suits. And for guys in construction working with dangerous substances or paints, oh, it doesn't have to be just dangerous like lead or whatever, but just high amounts of dust. If you're doing sandblasting, uh, if you're doing spray painting, uh, power sanding, you know, drywall, you really don't want to get coated in that stuff. So you can buy Tyvek brand Tyvek suits and you just slip them on like coveralls and zip them all up and, you know, put the rest of your PPE on and. You know, when you're done, you go to your decontamination room or undressing room, and you take all that stuff off, and you leave it in there. And right you know, now, your car's not trashed, your house isn't trashed, and right. You know, so there's a lot of things you can do, but again, nobody seems to do it. No, and our, I mean, our uh, the guy that sprays all of our foam, uh, they, oh, they, they wear have, them all the time. They wear all that stuff, mm -hmm. and um, yeah. that way it doesn't get all over them. Yes, Robbie. When we did the 24-hour uh, buildathon. Uh huh. I really wish somebody would have told me about the uh, dust. The drywall dust? Yeah, because you're saying, Rich said now, drywall dust, you know, you put the stuff on. Yeah, it was all over. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. Well, that we had so many people working in such a small area. That wasn't even bad. 
<laughs> oh. Right. Well, and it, what's changed, though, is like years ago, before we had roto zips and all that stuff, everybody was doing everything with a keyhole saw and a, and a drywall square. So you're basically cutting with a utility knife or a little jab saw, just making little cuts. Mm -hmm. Well, now that you're using power tools to drill out or cut out around outlets and things, uh, the amount of dust generated is probably 80% more. Right. You know, That's the roto zip. Board. Robbie, remember oh, yeah. using the roto zip? Mm -hmm. I'm going. So that well, amount of dust is just increases it all. So you can buy hoods for those to extract the dust and it, but it's it's not practical, even though it works, it's not practical to be dragging that plus the rotor zip around the entire house trying to do stuff. So I right. get that. It's not cost effective. Exactly. Rich, so do that's I always a big thing wearing that. And I think the the very last thing I can think of would be like face shields. Mm-hmm. Rich, do I put do I yeah. put the um, the overalls and the coveralls and everything else on first and then all the rest of my PPE? Or do I dress up, dress down? What what do I do here? I just put them on, uh, glasses first. I guess left a lot shoe. of it kind of goes right to logic. So, yeah, you put your suit on then or your PPE, but you want to tape up your collar and all that. But, again, it's going to go back to what you're working with or what you're trying to protect yourself from. Okay. Yep. Yep. But it generally start with suits, the They don't breathe real well either. No. So they're good for losing weight. <laughs> Ron? Yes, ma'am. Juven Awi? Yeah, good. Can you see? I, yeah, and I you just, keep looking at it. Yeah, like well, I, I, I scratched myself, and I'm just dripping all over the place here. So. Yeah, what happened? I don't know. I just scratched myself. Oh, just recently. That. Just like right now, I just I had an itch, so I just went. Oh. But I ripped something. Over. So next week, Mighty House will bring you first aid. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there we go. Duct tape and uh, Electri paper towel. Electrical tape and a piece of paper towel. Boom, done. Yeah, been there, done that many times. Yep, that's how you do that. And I started wearing gloves, and I'm far better off. See, look at that. It's on the table. I mean, I just... All over the place. Bleeding yeah. all over. Wow. That's a good one. Yeah, so it's it's like more than six feet, right? <laughs> <laughs> you should be wearing a face shield now. Why? That was my intro for Rich. Oh. Yeah, you would need a face shield in case there's blood spraying around. I wouldn't Splat want to splattering all face. over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay, I'm going to call an ambulance for you. Ah, it's fine. Not, nothing, it's a little a scratch. Duct tape, nothing a little duct tape can't take care of. It's just a scratch. Get over here. That's yeah. it. I've Does got... your dog bite? <laughs> right? <laughs> I've, I've got a tourniquet around here somewhere. Oh, it'll you do? Okay. Yeah. yeah, it'll be yeah. fine. All right. Don't worry about it. So, uh, have, right, we, so... have we wrapped up our list now? Yes, yes, I believe we've wrapped up personal protection equipment for daily people's working around the house. Right. Plus, we had a little coronavirus uh, bonus uh, well, section in the beginning. Well, it kind of suits it because I don't like people running around thinking that they're perfectly safe just because they have a mask on. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the N95 masks I see don't have the exhalation valve in them. Right, which is... Which then confuses me because they always did. Yeah, see, there, there's... You might what... as well be wearing a sock. See, it's got... I mean, the... You don't Can have you that valve. That? Right. And then now it, you know your respirator's no good when you exhale and your glasses fog up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is the other thing I found with safety glasses, too, is is that. So what we used to do uh, in the Navy is we would put shaving cream on it. Mm -hmm. It kind of puts that. a little bit of a barrier on there to where when you're when you're, that hot air comes right up above you, you, it's already got something on there. Yeah, toothpaste does that, too. Toothpaste, mm -hmm. Yep. And I know for, like, going diving or whatever, you could put... A cut a potato up and put the starch juice on there. Mm -hmm. Potato oh. juice. Potato juice. Yeah. yeah. Potato juice. That's what so. I like to be drinking. Right? That's right. Yeah, hey. There you go. I'm not sure vodka <laughs> does it, but I'm pretty sure the potato raw does. <laughs> all right. So get us out of here, Ron. All right. That's cool. PPE. PPE. Did you learn something today, Robbie? Yes, I did. Good. Good. So podcasts of all our shows are available at MightyHouse.net, Stitcher, iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and on HomeImprovementUSA.com. Next week, are we going to do a Robbie's World, Rob, Robbie? Yes. Okay, good. Yes. That's what I want. You, you can always look for us on Facebook Live, YouTube Live, and uh, you'll find all of our podcasts, everything like that, at MightyHouse.net. For Fuzzy Robbie, Rich Calgill, Robbie Earhart, and the entire Mighty House team, I'm Ron Calgill. Keep it square and level. Until next time. Until next, next time. time. There you go. Thank you. Bye-bye now.